But, but well, I, the way the way that happened was myself and Dick Grant were in you know Connor's pub one night, and I remember Paddy Paddy Calori was there and Willie Begg and John, and they were they were going going well, but we were we were sort of um, taken with um, Paddy's uh, facial gestures. You know, he was really he was, he'd be going like that a lot of time. You know, and uh, his big big eyebrows, very satanic looking face. And I, I just for jokingly said to to Dick, I said, wouldn't it be great to do a video? Because we hadn't any video cameras around them. I said, we would be great to do a video of Paddy, Paddy and the lads playing. And uh, Dick, Dick, I think Dick said something like, it's, that wouldn't be a bad idea. And that started the idea, Roland. And um, the only one we knew that had a video camera was Pascal Brooks. He did weddings and stuff. So I approached Pascal and asked him, would he be able to, Give us an odd, uh, an odd time, maybe an hour or two hours to, to visit somebody, and he was he jumped at it. Really, he was very helpful. He wasn't very used to it. He didn't know anything about the music, but he was good on the camera work. And one time we were doing Gussie, that was very funny, really, because he didn't want to be recorded at all. He was nervous, really. Oh, I can't. He said, oh, my, "My flute's not good enough." Well, I said, "I'll take your flute, and I'll do your flute up." So I took the flute back. I was in Fenora at the time. To the workshop, and I spent a little time at it and got it playing nicely. And so he, that was no excuse then. He said, Well, I don't know if I can do it or not. So I said, we'll, we'll see anyway, we'll ask you. And anyway, the day came when we went up to the house, and of course, he was inside the, the, the day we were going to do it. And he was out, he, he went out in the field, he wouldn't go back in for a while. Ah, he had a flute in his hand, I remember. I can't do it, he said, I can't do it. He said, Well, take it easy anyway, have a cup of tea and see how it goes. Because I talked to him a good bit beforehand. So it's a good bit of work behind the scenes, you know. And uh, eventually, anyway, he sat down and he played Take the Mills, the Mills are grinding. And he was only halfway through it. And Pascal said, hold on, he said, we'll have to stop now. Is something wrong? And oh, Gussie was very annoyed. He was re- he was just going nicely, you know. And uh, he went, he ran out the door. And I went out after him. Gussie said, come on, and back in. I, mean, I, I said to him, Pascal doesn't really understand the music very much. He's, he's, but he's good at the camera work. Just give it one more go. I'm sorry that he stopped you in the middle of it. And uh, uh, yeah, it was, I can, you can always cut this out if you want to, but he's, I, I said to Gussie, I said, he doesn't understand the music that much. He's a nice fella. He's only a bollocks, said, said Gussie. And I said, well, he, he might be, but it, just play it once more anyway. So he came in anyway. I, I managed to drag him back in again and sat him down and we got him to, to play the tunes that way. But it was, just, it was touch and go now with Gussie. Whereas with Michael, and uh, Michael would play all day for you. But unfortunately, I never got a chance to do do back. He was gone before we got the idea. But yeah, there was some couple good nice clips of, of him around. I, I think Kira Mokmavuna and that gang were, were down that time with Paki. Yeah, and then we just went, we went around a lot of the other lads as well. You know, I think it was 13 people. Tom Doolan, Bobby Gardner's uncle. He was very, very, he was in his 90s when we were up in his house. It was a great night up there, really. I still remember his wife, when she was making tea for us and that sugar had gone hard in the bag, the white bag of sugar. It was solid, like a rock. And she had a wooden spoon and Tom was playing the tunes and she's beating the beating the sugar with a wooden spoon but she wasn't beating the beating the sugar in time, you know. <laughs> and we hadn't got the heart to stop her, you know. It was all part of the, the ceiling, you know. The big lump of bacon hanging up out of the ceiling. That's Lorena McKenna's house now. She bought that place and Irina from Canada, she owns that place where Tom used to live. That was Tom, but there were lots of people we met that time, and we were right. And there were the people who, like like Michael bringing in, then um, the concertina player, the woman that, what was that woman's name? Yeah, that's right, yeah. Yeah, that was wonderful. The German concertina. Yeah, 